All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Everything College World Podcast. Today, me and Nicky will be doing a 2023 Big Ten Championship game analysis and prediction. Iowa will be facing Michigan, a rematch from 21, where Michigan completely blew out the Hawkeyes. 22-point line in favor of the Wolverines of a total of 34 and a half. 8 p.m. Eastern time on Fox from Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. Looking at the Michigan offense, you know, coming off a game against Ohio State where they scored in all four quarters, J.J. McCarthy was highly efficient. Over 74% comp rate this season, over 2,400 yards, uh, you know, only has four interceptions and has uh, 19 touchdowns. He's also a big playmaker of his legs, three scores in a buck 70 plus on the ground. McCarthy was great against the Buckeyes, did not make any mistakes, did have one, you know, odd crossbody throw that ended up being converted. Um, you know, he was good in pass protection. Um, you know, he didn't take too many sacks. He also throttled one. Uh, between two defenders early on for a touchdown. McCarthy was really good against the Buckeyes, and obviously he hadn't been all that great against Penn State where they had to shut down the passing attack due to the inability to pass protect. And against Maryland, he had a bit of a shaky game. Some reports were saying he wasn't 100%. Well, you know, I didn't really notice that, but, you know, regardless, he looked 100%. If that was the case against the Buckeyes, Nick, a buck 48 for him, had another 17 rushing, was able to evade pressure to a nice tune, and he comes out victorious in the game. McCarthy definitely quieted some of the doubters in this performance against Ohio State. I think he did his job and did what he had to do outside of that one pass that you alluded to where he threw across his body and luckily it was able to be grabbed by his receiver across the middle. That was a very poor decision, but outside of that one single decision that was questionable, he looked good throughout the day. Like you said, 16 to 20, 148 and a touchdown. Throwing to his, to Loveland over the middle constantly. Loveland had five catches for 88 yards against Ohio State. That seemed to be something that was working for them. The big physical player, Loveland, he is, which is a solid Solid piece there. This offense is really solid. They're able to run the ball efficiently against Ohio State, and that's going to be a big key to success against this Iowa defense. It is a very vaunted Iowa defense. They do know how to stop you on both sides, on both assets of offense. I think McCarthy looked good. I think he's getting comfortable. You know, if he was a little banged up, that doesn't entirely shock me, but that could write off what happened against Maryland and Penn State, but he got the job done. And Michigan, they got the job done on offense. They scored when they needed to, 30 points, scored in every single quarter, and looked good moving the ball. Yeah, this running game certainly continues to dominate. You know, 32 carries combined between Quorum and Edwards for 119 total yards. Quorum had 88 and two touchdowns, including a 22-yard rushing touchdown there in that second half. Edwards, he got some more touches than we're accustomed to seeing this year. Quorum is just a goal line warrior. He's up to 22 touchdowns on the year, approaching 1,000 yards. Should eclipse that year in this mark. And he certainly hasn't been able to play the last couple of postseasons with some injuries. He's full to go here, though, and he's embracing this opportunity. I know he's very appreciative to be playing here in Indianapolis. You know, 170-plus rushing yards per, per game for Michigan. It was tough. For the most part, Ohio State really was able to slow them down. Um, but in that fourth quarter, they were really able to put the game away with this grinding rushing attack. They're now facing a team that's also dynamic when it comes to stopping the run in Iowa. Running straight downhill is probably not going to be the optimal way to go here for Michigan, but they ran for 200 plus yards and four touchdowns in the meeting two years ago, Nick, and the defense is certainly just as elite as it was, uh, you know, in 21 uh, points per game are a lot higher though for Iowa in terms of allowed. They're doing a lot better. Um, this is still a great front. They're incredibly disciplined and they're powerful. I think you're going to see a little bit more creativity out of this Michigan run game. And if not, you know, Penn state, for example, had like 60 plus rushing attempts. I think Michigan will look to do something like that. And I think they will be very effective in doing so. Michigan will have to run the ball and be effective doing so. Like you said, they are a very talented unit on the ground. Blake Corum, Donovan Edwards, a great one-two punch. We saw that against Ohio State. They're very solid on the ground. Corum, obviously a very exciting back who's having a fantastic season. His numbers are fantastic. 21 touchdowns for him on the ground this season, or 22 touchdowns on the ground this season. Beg your pardon, an impressive number for him. A very physical back leading the way. Edwards, a nice complimentary back. Again, this is a very strong Iowa front seven. This defense is fantastic for Iowa. They're very hard, heavy hitting unit. So now you bring in this rushing attack that's going to go on against that. You know, do you give the edge to Iowa? Do you give the edge to Michigan? I give the slight edge to Michigan, in my opinion. I think Michigan does have a slight edge running the ball here. We've seen this running unit just continue to improve throughout the season. And now they got a great opportunity to challenge against a very good front seven in Iowa on a neutral site. Yeah, and you're going to see them look to utilize a number of receivers here at the sticks. Again, we've talked about it numerous times. Though. It's not the deepest receiving core. It's really just a three-man game of Wilson, Johnson, and Loveland, who dominated the Buckeyes. 88 yards is constantly available in the middle of the field. Wilson's a guy who can, you, you can find in the red zone, downfield on slots, uh, usually at the sticks, though. Cornelius like Johnson has some nice uh, you know, physicality in size as well. So he also has some of those similar qualities 
Uh, and, you know, this passing attack certainly is allowing them to have a nice balanced approach here on offense. Uh, as long as they're smart with the football and they just look for these guys at the boundary, you know, in breaking routes, the ability of Wilson with his route running to win at the point of attack is big for this offense. And that's really what they're going to util- utilize them in this game. Uh, kind of like the Ohio State game, only 16 completions on 20 attempts, something like that. I don't think they're going to throw it more than 25 times in this game. Um, but I think McCarthy's certainly going to make nice, smart decisions and he's going to find these guys in the short to intermediate area. They might be able to look to pop a few big plays off downfield. You didn't really look for them. Uh, you didn't see that a lot against the Buckeyes. Nick. They didn't go downfield very often one bit. And I think they might try to surprise the Hawkeyes. I certainly see no reason to throw it more than 20, 25 times. If you can find a way to get rhythm on the running game against this Iowa team, you know, I think it's possible they can get the, that, you know, 39 total carries against Ohio state. They would like to get a similar, you know, 35 to 40 numbers against Iowa. I think this, this offense has opportunity to throw the ball if they need to. I think they're a very talented unit when they have to, it's a very thin unit, but they have three guys in Johnson, Wilson and Loveland. That step up. I talked about Loveland earlier. You know, very talented player who had a great game. Wilson caught the one touchdown pass from JJ McCarthy against Ohio State. He had 36 yards on three grabs, 12 yards for a catch. Cornelius Johnson looked good for his four grabs, 33 yards for him as well. So they they can find their guys when they need to. McCarthy has been pretty pinpoint accurate when he has to be. This is a passing unit that's not going to jump off the sheet at yet. It's not like a crazy, crazy unit, but they're a reliable unit here going against this Iowa defense. They have an opportunity to potentially move the ball, and they could also, you know, they get him down deep with a big play if they if they have to. I think Jim Harbaugh coming back to coach, you know, allowing them to open up the playbook potentially. They could fully open up the playbook here and maybe hit them down deep and change things up. Yeah, and this offensive line still amongst the nation's best. Uh, Zach Zenter, right guard, left in the game with an air cast on that left leg. He appears to be done for the year. And they slotted Carson Barnard into that guard position and Trenty Jones moved to right tackle. They're still incredibly stout though on the interior. Drake Nugent having a great year. Trevor Keegan, another guy who's been, you know, an all-conference performer for a couple years. Ladarius Henderson, his return at left tackle really helped spark better pass protection. Barnard played a much better game than I thought he would. Um, I don't think they're going to have any struggles here. Zinter certainly uh, not being available at right guard. That's big, especially against defense like this. But Michigan, they're well prepared, I think. They're, uh, you know, Sharon Moore continues to talk about how they're going to need this entire offensive line. Uh, you know, you said at the beginning of the year, they don't need, you know, probably like eight to ten guys to step up. And I think they're certainly going to be well equipped here to handle this. Um, it's obviously a big blow. Zinter, though, you know, great football player. Nick, he's done a lot for this program. Career's over. Tough loss for, for the team to lose Zinter. He was taken to the U Michigan Hospital during the game. They reported that on the sideline. Tough loss for them, certainly in right guard. A big physical senior who has great experience. The rest of this offensive line, though, is a very solid unit. They're all experienced players, either graduate seniors or seniors who have played games. They plug in guys. They're very physical. They cr- create great run-blocking lanes. They're solid in p- pass protection when they have to be as well. You know, I think Michigan, it's a shame to lose a leader like that. And Zinter, you saw it affect them a little bit. They were a little emotional on the sideline following his injury, but I think they'll be able to plug in somebody new and be just fine in this game against Iowa. Yeah, I think as long as Michigan makes no mistakes and they just be patient and grind things out, they're going to have much success here against this defense. Looking at the Iowa offense, you know, slam dunk unit, the Hawkeyes field, you know, Deacon Hill, 48% completion rate, five touchdowns, six picks. This is a guy who's 6'3", 258 pounds playing the quarterback position. It's a very limited mobility. Uh, the run game, you know, this is really the staple of their program for the last couple of years, but they did have success, but it's all came to a crashing end. It's just this one-dimensional approach in this conference is no good. Lee Sean Williams, though, was a good player, 779 yards, has one score. Caleb Johnson has another three with 415 yards. Williams, though, was really taking over that position. Um, this ground game, though, they're just doing what, everything they can. You know, Johnson's seen exactly 10 carries each of the last three games, um, you know, 35 and a half attempts per contest for the Hawkeyes, 123 yards per contest. This is just going to be very tough to run on this defense, Nick. I mean, obviously, they're going to want to run the ball a lot here, too. A lot of 13 personnel. You see a lot of th- you know, three tight end looks, a fullback out there. Just old school football, and they're just not that great at executing. This is not a great offense, obviously. We knew that coming into this season. The stats on them are just disappointing. They're going to have to make a change. 18 points per game is what they're scoring at this point. 3.46 yards per attempt on the ground. That number is going to have to be a lot higher if they're going to want to compete with a team like Michigan that can certainly blitz you and score a ton of points. The quarterback, they brought in former Michigan Wolverine, Kate uh, Kate McNamara. It was hoping that he would be the guy to lead their offense. That did not work out. Deacon Hill has been the guy. Now 48% completion percentage under 1,000 yards passing, five touchdowns, six interceptions. 
Obviously, throwing the ball is not going to be the way to beat Michigan here. They're going to have to find some groove on the ground. LaShawn Williams, Caleb Johnson, Josiah Pedersen. These are all guys. They're going to have to be big for this uh, Iowa offense if they want to even be competitive in this game. It's a very tough battle, though, and I'm significantly concerned if I'm an Iowa fan about being even competitive in this game. Yeah, you know, this scheme causes you to have no consistency. just really seems to make quarterbacks play very bad football. Hill has thrown some nice balls, but for the most part, a lot of bad ones as well. And you talk about some of the guys in the receiving court. Nico Regini's a good player, still hasn't found the end zone this year. Caleb Brown, very good player, only has 14 reps for 142. Um, you know, their top rece- receiver is still Eric All, the former Michigan Wolverine. Only played in seven games, and nobody's even close to catching up to him in terms of production. Seth Anderson, 11 grabs, 150. So, I mean, there's some guys here like Regini and Brown that aren't awful by any means. These tight ends, though, Luke Lachi, he ended up going out early in the game. He could have been one of those guys. You know, he was supposed to be the Sam Laporta replacement. And, you know, obviously, they're two top tight ends going down. So, they really went with a you know, heavy blocking approach from these guys. Not a lot of production from the receiving room. The offensive line, this is a place where they've really struggled to develop players. Gennings Dunker over right tackle has been very good. Mason Richmond at left tackle, not so much. Connor Colby's really stepped up as a run blocker this year. At his right guard position, Rusty Feith, he's a nice pass blocker. Only one sack and five pressures allowed this year. His left guard spot. And then Logan Jones is a veteran at center. This is an offensive line, though. They just have a lot of heavy lifting to do, Nick, of how much they run. They got to be tough and physical. And then pass blocking, it's just, you know, such a nightmare with their QB's inability to be mobile and his inability to be, you know, sound and confident with his accuracy. This is an offense that is certainly a liability offense. The offensive line is a good part of this unit, but overall this offense is poor. The Affleck trivia question against Nebraska was that this is the first offense to score less than 250 points in a total season to win more than two games since UCF in 2008 won four games. This team won 10 games without an offense. It certainly is an impressive number, and it's fascinating that the team won 10 games. They're just a physically defensive team. Don't expect a whole lot of this offense. If they're going to want to be in this game, their defense is going to have to make crazy plays and keep them in it. They're going to have to find a, some running room on the ground. The big physical guys on the offensive line are going to have to block for them because they really just don't have a pulse passing the ball at all. Yeah, I'm looking at that Michigan defense allowing about 10 points per game this season. You know, Kyle McCord really found a rhythm against the Buckeyes. They ended up snagging two interceptions at the end of the day, though. And, you know, in that third quarter, the Buckeyes really just ran it right down at them. I think it was eight or nine straight runs. Still only end of the day if a buck 07 running the football. I think that's exactly what you're going to see I will look to do is about 100 to 110 yards. That's probably all they're going to get. That's really the ceiling for the Iowa rushing attack is they're facing a phenomenal defensive line. You know, Mason Graham's terrific. Rayshon Benny at 296 pounds. Chris Jenkins, one of the senior leaders for them. You, know, you talk about some of the edge rushers as well. You know, Braden McGregor, Josiah Stewart, Jalen Harrell ended up playing the final hit on McCord. I mean, these are great uh, defensive linemen. Uh, and Derek Moore, another guy who's very good this year for Michigan. It's just really hard to defend these guys because they're big, they're physical, they're nasty up front. They really developed these guys very well. And they're just phenomenal against the run this season. Like, they've not crunched one bit. Um, you know, they've only allowed a max of 164 yards, and that was against Penn State. Um, they've just been completely dominant. I think they're going to have a phenomenal effort here. I think they're looking to potentially hold this team below 50 yards. I think they're probably going to set a goal this week because I know they can certainly obtain it. A lot of the stunts and twists they have when it comes to blitzing with these front four guys, it's phenomenal, right? And they have a bunch of different blitz packages as well. They're probably not going to look to utilize them. This is going to be very tough for Iowa to run on. What do you expect from this front right here that, again, is coming off another dominant effort? Another dominant effort from the Michigan front. They're a very physical unit that can just stop the run when they have to. They looked very good against Ohio State, 107 yards on the ground for Ohio State, a number that needed to be higher if the Buckeyes wanted to win the game. This is a very physical front unit. They have some great players that get up there and they get tackles off the edge. Braden McGregor is fantastic off the edge. Mason Graham, the sophomore, really good at left, left defensive tackle. Chris Jenkins, a great player. Jalen Harrell is fantastic off the edge. The linebacking core, Michael Barrett and Junior Colson are two physical linebackers who are expert tacklers that get after the run. Prior to the, these are stats I'm using before the uh, before the Ohio State game, their opponents were scoring nine points per game in the 11 games prior to the game this past weekend. They were, you know, the defense was just fantastic against the run, 2.96 yards per attempt on the ground so below three yards per attempt this michigan uh defense is just smothering their opponents they cannot run the ball against them at all and that's a problem for iowa because that's the one thing that is going to be the key for them is can they run the ball if michigan dominates in the trenches and stops the run this game will be over very quickly yeah and you got linebackers michael barrett and junior colson of no problem shedding blocks and being physical ernest tosman has been phenomenal himself 
when he's been on the field. And you look at the secondary, you know, Mike Sandra still was phenomenal in the slot. Uh, Macari Page at safety. Uh, you know, these guys have been really good. Will Johnson out at the other cornerback position. I know he was injured a little bit in that Ohio State game. I believe he returned, though. Um, you know, still, you know, this is a secondary. It's not going to be tested one bit. Josh Wallace and Johnson. You know, these guys have certainly struggled over the last couple of games, but I was not going to possess much of a threat on the boundary. Um, but they still have to come into here and not let their guard down, Nick. I think they're going to play with plenty of energy. Um, the secondary just really needs to be good and sound covering underneath because that's what I was going to look to do, just pitching it out to tight ends some out routes as well, uh, you know, those timing routes and whatnot. So they just really need to be sound in tackling and, you know, come into this game with a pulse and not just think that the, and it's going to be a cakewalk. Even though it is going to be, I want to see them play with energy, and I think they will. And it's just going to be a dominant effort from this back end. Should be, you know, business closed for them on Saturday. They should keep their focus on. You can't let anything slip up if you let Iowa get something happen early on the field to get a quick pass or two past you. That could be a disappointing for this Michigan team. This is a good unit, the secondary unit. They've gotten better. They looked pretty good against Michigan, uh, against Ohio State. They got the interception to seal the game. They picked off McCord. I like what they have. I think there are, two, there are some solid players in the secondary. You know, Rod Moore, Malachi Page are two solid players. Will Johnson, pretty good at cornerback. Josh Wallace, really good player as well. Good physical player. They're not going to be tested a whole lot here, but there's this is a good unit against the pass prior to the game against Ohio State. They had 14 interceptions, five touchdowns given up passing. Teams were their opponents were averaging a passer rating of 97, so below 100. I think that, again, Iowa is going to continue to struggle against this Michigan defense. This Michigan defense has a great opportunity here to get a, to put up some good numbers and really just cut down the pass. Iowa could struggle to have total offense numbers, even eclipsing 100 at this point. You look at the Iowa defense, a unit that you know is the big reason why they win all these games. 13-10, 15-13, 10-7, 15 Those are some of the victories they've had this year, Nick. 22 nothing over Rutgers at home as well. I mean, these are just insane. Each week they continue to set a new low total for, you know, CFB odds. Um, and that certainly isn't going to be the case this week. But the Iowa defense is terrific. They only give up about 107 rushing yards per game. Penn State, 57 carries for 215 yards. It's a 3.8-yard average. I mean, Penn State was just having a high-volume rushing attack in that one, and they still weren't cracking that much. You know, 12.2 points per game allowed. This is just such a fun unit to watch, led by Jay Higgins, one of the nation's top tacklers. He's also an elite backer in coverage. He's going to be the tone setter here, 141 stops, one interception, four pass breakups. He's going to have to, you know, at least double those numbers in this game to give his offense opportunities. The only transfer they added was Nick Jackson from Virginia. He ended up being a perfect fit as the second leading tackler for them. This is just a well-coached defensive line as well. Ethan Hucker, Herkett, that is. Logan Lee, Dante Craig, Joe Evans, a senior. Seems he's been around forever. Aaron Graves. I mean, this is a phenomenal defensive line. These guys are all fairly impactful when it comes to stopping the run. They're good at block shedding. Very disciplined when it comes to, you know, gap integrity, Nick. Very good run defense Iowa possesses here facing this really good Michigan rushing attack. I expect them to have a good bit of success in this one. But how long do you think you'll last, especially for a team that only has 22 sacks on the season? Well, this Iowa offense is terrible and really not worth watching. The defense is certainly worth watching. The numbers on them are fantastic. 12.2 points given up per game is the average. 146 total points given up on the season. They can really stand there. They bend don't break they get the stops they're a very physical strong unit that has some great tacklers i like this front seven a whole lot there are some seriously talented pieces on it here now they have a tough they have a tough ask here against this michigan running attack i think they can be able to hold their own probably for a quarter but i don't think it'll be much longer than that this is definitely one of the best offenses they're going to have faced this season the other one being penn state who torched them 31 nothing on the road so if there's anything sort to compare to you got to be concerned if you're a hawkeyes fan this team is fantastic. 3.9 yards per attempt given up on the ground. Two rushing touchdowns allowed is an incredible number when you really think about it. Is there? I think Michigan can score more than two rushing touchdowns in this game alone at this point. This is a very interesting matchup. This front seven is physical. These guys do get in the backfield, but they do kind of lack those sacks, like you said, which is definitely a questionable thing. McCarthy might have a lot of time to throw if he needs to. This, Mich this Iowa uh Defense is fastening up against this Michigan offense. It's an interesting battle between these two physical units. I just think Michigan does have the edge right now. Yeah, and the secondary is still, you know, a great unit. 55% comp rate from opponents, 174 yards, 10 interceptions, and 10 touchdowns. Cooper DeJean, of course, he's out for the year. He's not going to play. Jermari Harris is back. He's been playing some solid football this year. Sebastian Castro on the other side, though. He's been an elite cover corner for them. Xavier Nwankba, a former five-star at safety. He's having a great year. Quinn Schultz his safety position. I mean, they have great defensive backs. 
these guys are also veterans. They seem to, you know, stay in the program a long time. And, you know, they're well coached by Phil Parker. His cover two shell is phenomenal. Uh, they did get beat, though, for a play against Nebraska. That was about it, though. You know, I can't remember the yardage. It was like, you know, a 50, 60 yard play or something. They got beat downfield for a touchdown. And, you know, they've only allowed you know, two touchdowns through the air since uh, the 7th of October after they played Purdue. They only gave up one in that one. You know, four of the 10 they allowed this year was against Penn State. Um, and this is a team that just does not give up a lot through the air, Nick. They haven't allowed over 250 yards once in this game or once in this year. Don't expect that to be the case here, but these guys will have to be physical. These safeties are great at, you know, coming downhill, stopping the run. The corners are, you know, very good at defending any type of double moves, any posts. I mean, they're well coached. They pass things off very well. Communication is exceptional. Um, kind of like Michigan, though. They need to be sound underneath. I think you're going to see a lot of drag routes, a lot of, you know, quick routes from guys like Roman Wilson at the sticks. It's going to allow them to convert. I think the middle of the field will probably be, be, be open, kind of like it was against the Buckeyes with Colston Love. When I think Michigan's going to do plenty, though, to convert against the secondary. It's not going to be a field day by any means. The stat sheet's probably not going to be pretty, but Michigan will do enough to move the ball against the secondary. I think Michigan will do enough to move the ball against the secondary. This is a great secondary unit that is solid. You know, passer rating for opponents is 99.46. 2,000 yards given up through the air. 10 touchdowns to 10 interceptions ratio is a pretty solid ratio. You know, they're not going against a, you know, a fantastic passing attack with Michigan. If Iowa was playing Ohio State, I'd be seriously concerned for the secondary against that level of passing attack. This Michigan passing attack is not quite the heights that you could expect out of some other units in college football. I think Iowa does have potential matchup ability to match up with Michigan here. They could potentially win that battle in the secondary, but I think that they're in trouble as a whole for this defense. This is an interesting thing to watch, though, as a fan, is can Michigan find a way to attack this secondary and get some success doing so, or are they going to have to rely on the run? Looking at the tail of the tape, the team comparisons. I gave the Hawkeyes the edge of the linebacker and in the secondary, and I think even Michigan fans can probably understand why. That's just how good they are at those positions. Can even make a case for the defensive line. Uh, but Michigan's getting a clean sweep across the board pretty much, especially when it comes to the offensive unit. Uh, not even a conversation that'd be had on that side of the ball, Nick. Uh, do you think the Hawkeyes, though, have enough in those two edges to stay in this football game? I just don't think there is a way that Iowa stays in the point in this game at this point. I think this defense is fantastic, and I have to give them credit because they were able to do a lot without having an offense at all, which is still something that's very impressive to me. But overall, I just don't see a way Iowa hangs in here. This offense for Michigan is just going to have a chance to score and get the job done. They're going to be able to win this game by simply just scoring points early and often. Iowa could certainly be in a whole lot of trouble here. Well, yeah, the final thoughts and the prediction, you know, keys to the game for Michigan. Just be patient, play your game, protect the ball. You know, two years ago, they were like 12-point favorites in this game. And I was like, they'll easily hit that. It's not going to be right away. But over 60 minutes, um, if you don't turn the ball over and give them opportunities, and you're certainly going to force enough three and outs, the field position game will work in your favor, especially your big playability. For Iowa, the only thing I can come up with, Nick, is just pray Deacon Hill turns into Doug Flutie. They're not even going to call plays that allow him to do that. 45-6, to six, I think they're easily going to cover this. I understand why they put it at 22, because 21 is three touchdowns. I totally see what Vegas is doing here. They're not going to fool me, though. Michigan's going to win this one with ease. I think they hit the over by themselves. Hawkeyes have a great defense, but Michigan, they've played great in these Big Ten title games the last two years. They put up 40-plus points in both of them, covered the spread in both of them. They do not play around. With their head coach coming back, they're going to be really fired up to make a, one more statement before the committee makes their decisions. Certainly, you have to compare it to the last time these two teams played the Big Ten title game two years ago, where Michigan won 42-3. to You can expect a similar result, which is something that you went with, basically a similar result, except each team get, gets three more points for you. I want a little more conservative, 35-10, but I do think that Michigan will cover the spread. 22, you know, I looked at it, I thought it was a little lofty, and then again, you're right, Vegas knows what they're doing, you know, pushing it just north of three touchdowns here. But I think Michigan will have no problems. I think the script is similar to the script that we saw in that game two years ago, where it's going to be just a whole lot of running attempts in the game in 2021. Michigan ran the ball 34 times for 211 yards. That's going to be a similar thing. I think they potentially even push it to 40. That's kind of what you're looking at here. They're just going to find a way to run the ball. Corum ran the ball a, a few times. Hassan Haskins was the guy that got the bulk of the carries in that 21 game. Corum, Donovan Edwards can both get the, a similar load to what Haskins got in 21. I think Michigan cruises through this game. I think you know it was a foregone collusion that conclusion whoever won the game today 
today in Ann Arbor would be the one that would run on and beat Iowa pretty handily. And now Michigan gets the opportunity to do so. They could position themselves as the one seed potentially if Georgia continues to struggle against Georgia Tech or if they lose to Alabama. Michigan can slot themselves as the one seed and they get to pick which game they want to play in and potentially pick the Rose Bowl to be their site. I would, wouldn't surprise me at all. Michigan's in a very good spot here. They're trying to prove the doubters wrong. Obviously, they didn't have their coach against Ohio State, the whole sign ceiling thing. They're trying to prove a, they have a point to prove, and this could be a big step in that direction and proving that point. Yeah, just look at the Penn State game. They lost 31 to nothing. Their defense was on the field 97 plays. They still gave up less than 400 yards. That's absurd. But I think you're going to see something similar here with the Iowa offense. Can't move an inch. And Michigan, they're going to protect the football. They don't give it away very often. I think it's going to be a very nice, balanced, conceded approach. And again, you're not going to get all your points at once. But over 60 minutes, Michigan will certainly cover the spread. And I think they'll force a turnover, too. It makes that a little bit easier. That's going to be it for today's episode. Nick, appreciate you joining me. Uh, this game's usually not very close. Uh, but it's always interesting to see, you know, the winner of this division one more time before that playoff. You know, it's conference championship week, an exciting week in college football. Very excited for this game. This matchup, you know, not as exciting as some of the other ones we're going to preview this week, but still an important game for CFP considerations. Michigan looking to get that big statement win as they move close to being potentially the one seed in the playoff. You should just like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. Potentially being the one seed in the playoff.